Can you hear my housemates? I can hear them laughing. No, I can't. Okay, good. But I mean, if the creepers can hear, then sorry, they're having a party downstairs. It's Nikki's ghost housemates. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. Welcome to Creepy Conversations. Oh, yeah. I'm Nikki. <laughs> and I'm Kalai. Just You're before. Fully- oh. oh. I forgot what I was supposed to say. (laughs) Go. Whoops, my bad. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I was just saying, before we started recording, we were talking about Tresse and how much we love that shit. Shit. We finally figured out how to pronounce Mr. Tan's name. Bajet, right? Bajet, yeah. Yeah. Finally. We love you. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we love his like cameos he had cameos a lot in, of it yeah in like the tv show is it a tv show in the show in the series yeah the series you guys should watch it it's called trese t-r-e-s-e it means 13 right yeah in filipino <laughs> slash spanish is it <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> because our numbers are in Spanish. In Spanish. That's why. <laughs> That's true. But yeah. yeah. You know what? I find it weird that we have two versions of our numbers. So like if you do money, we say it in Spanish. Spanish, yeah. But sometimes we count in our language for other things. That's true. Maybe because we didn't have money before we were colonized i feel like we were just trading trading and cows then, and shit <laughs> yeah and then like colonization happened happened no. don't so, take our word for this we have no idea what yeah, we're talking about we're stupid as you guys <laughs> know <laughs> but anyway for this topic we're not going to be talking about a Filipino character or stuff like that. Actually, our topic is going to be a little bit sad. Also, trigger warning before I start. There's going to be violence against children and other upsetting topics. Anyway, the general thing is very sad. But yeah, I'm going to be talking about the death of Wang Yue. Sources for this episode is going to be bbc.com and Wikipedia. So, Wang Yue, or also known as Little Yue, Yue, right? Yue. <laughs> Yue. <laughs> That's why I kept looking at you because am I saying it right? I but feel yeah. like a kindergarten teacher, like, yes, this is how you say it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was known as the Yue Yue, or in other Chinese articles or reports, she was just known as Yue Yue without the lil. So I'm gonna call her Yue Yue. She was a two year old Chinese girl who was run over by two vehicles on the afternoon of October 13, 2011, in a narrow road in Fushan, Guangdong, in China. As she lay bleeding on the road for more than seven minutes, there were at least 18 passersby that skirted around her body and ignored her. I literally watched the video because I thought that I could take it. And while watching it, I was like, mm, How this could shit you is so like... hard to watch. So yeah, I'll explain it later what happened i'm trying to process this because how can you just be like oh this is roadkill by yeah and it's a child and she's like she looks like a child she's not like like yeah i mean like this is a human being yeah yeah literally like she wasn't like wrapped in like a blanket or whatever like you could see that it was a real person yeah or a child So yeah, she was eventually helped by a female rubbish scavenger. If you don't know what that is, they're kind of, they're not garbage collectors, but they kind of collect recyclables like plastic and shit like that so they can sell it. 
So right. that's who helped her and sent her to the hospital for treatment. But she eventually succumbed to her injuries and died eight days later. The CCTV recording of the incident was uploaded onto the internet and it quickly stirred widespread reaction in China and overseas. A lot of the people who watched it and like the commentators, they believed that it was kind of like a moral decline in the modern Chinese society because, you know, you would understand if it was just like two people that passed by. I actually can't even understand why you would just pass by. Yeah, but like, but 18 that was a lot. Yeah. Is a lot of yeah, and if you watch the video, <laughs> they weren't even just passing by. Some of them even like stopped to look at her and then moved forward, and they did nothing. Like I would understand if you were in a hurry, you would stop and like call somebody. Hey, can you please call for help? help. Yeah, because I can't stop. Somebody I can't needs stay. to help yeah. this kid. Yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> but yeah, they... It amazes me that they actually stop. It's kind of like, oh, let me see what's going on here. Mm, not my problem. Bye. Yeah, it that's exactly feels what like they that? were doing. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Wow. However, other commentators, like, they pointed out that there was an incident prior to this called the Peng Yu incident in 2006 wherein a person who's considered a good Samaritan who helped an injured accident victim. So what happened was in the Peng Yu incident, a lady fell from the bus while she was trying to transfer to another bus. When this dude Peng Yu helped her and brought her to the hospital, days later she sued Peng Yu, the dude who helped her, because she was claiming that he caused her to fall down. What? And so, yeah, and so Peng Yu was forced to pay the victim's medical bill and other stuff as well. And I read, like, the, the case. So Peng Yu eventually admitted that he was the one who caused the accident. But what they said was that he was forced to admit it because of like legal shit to like end the whole like lawsuit the whole yeah yeah so he just settled because he was able to get like another witness to testify against the woman who fell the woman yeah yeah and the witness said that no he wasn't the one that caused the accident he was actually trying to help you and like you fell on your own or and something like that and yeah yeah, but the woman still, like, you know, pushed for the lawsuit. And the dude, Peng Yu, from what I read from the other articles, was like, I don't want this to he linger just wants on. It over. To, like, yeah. yeah, he just wants it over. So he was advised to admit to it and then just pay for everything. So he eventually, like, admitted to it. Wow. It amazes me what capitalism can do to people. What greed is- can do to people crazy yeah i don't know if like the lady did it on purpose maybe she was just confused because she was an older lady Mm -hmm. but like i I think it's doubt it i doubt it sorry if i'm like blaming her for this but then if you come to think about it if she pushes through with a lawsuit she doesn't have to pay for her medical bills because someone else will do that for her so it could have been like a scam like that could have been her whole plot for this that's true and it's not like even here in the philippines that shit happens a lot oh how much more in the u.s ours is different because usually when drivers they hit you and they don't have the finances to pay for it they run you over and make sure you're dead rather than paying for your medical bills it's the sad truth yeah, that's true. Especially <laughs> if it happens in like early morning. Oh, yeah. And the usual incidents here, like if you're drunk and you accidentally hit somebody, <sighs> what the people will do is make sure that you're. It's so fucked up, but it's unfortunately like a real thing here. Not everybody yeah. does that. 
Yeah. But there have been like incidents that that shit happening. This um, is our reality. So yeah, back to the Peng Yu incident. Several regional Good Samaritan laws were passed following the incident. Um, and in two, 2017, a national Good Samaritan law came into force to prevent the situation like what happened to Peng Yu, where he was sued by the person who he tried to help. A, a law was passed to avoid that. So back to Yue, Yue, Yue. She was two years old when she wandered away from her home in Fushan while her mother was collecting laundry during a thunderstorm. So she just wandered. And I can't blame her parents because kids that age... They do that a lot. Yeah, they love to escape from you. (laughs) This is someone who like has a lot of nephews and nieces. They do that shit. (laughs) The universal babysitter. <laughs> Auntie Kalai! Right here. <laughs> but yeah, back to Yue. She was caught in the CCTV. This footage came from like a rice vendor store. Okay. They got the CCTV footage from that. So she was wandering in the narrow... It's not very narrow. I feel like it's a normal size street here in the Philippines. Okay. But and like in other countries, it is narrow. It's fucking narrow. <laughs> yeah, it's a busy market street. There are lots of like stuff on the side of the road, like how streets are in wet markets. And then w- within a few minutes of her appearance on the screen, I find it crazy that the driver didn't see her because there's like a good distance before he struck her. And he wasn't even speeding because it was a market a street market yeah so his speed was okay and i think he thought that the kid was out of the road already but i don't know why he didn't stop to make sure that she wasn't in the road anymore but yeah he passed what do you call this he still proceeded yeah she was struck by the white van and she fell on the ground she went under the van's front wheels fuck she, and she was like near the sorry for the very graphic description but I want to describe it so that you guys would know what happened Picture, you can skip yeah. if you want to yeah and she was already near the back the second wheel that oh when the God. driver paused and then he proceeded Woo! Woo! oh my god he backed a bit so he Do ran you over think- her three times the first wheel, second wheel, and then again and then with the reverse. second wheel. Oh my god. Yeah, and then he moved on. And then that's when like they there were like eighteen people that walked past her, did Wait. not even help her. Did he do that on purpose? It sounds like he wanted to kill her. I because have it's no like, idea. And then you know, the motion yeah. of the car is like, why do you need to reverse? Yeah. If you were just moving forward like Oh wow! I don't know if he knew that he ran over a kid. How could you it not feel like, it? Yeah, and I feel like he must have heard her cry. I can't tell because in the CCTV there's no sound. But yeah, he backed up, and it was a slow. Like he moved forward already. Yeah, and he was like a bit. There was like a bit of distance from the body mm. from Ua Ua, and then he backed up, and then went forward i will tell you that it's impossible for him not to feel this because okay i must spill some tea i was out with my ex before and we actually accidentally ran over someone we had that experience was it the one who fell from his bike from his, yes yes he was the while you were passing old russian dude who fell from his bike and then when he fell, so our car was a Pajero. Why am I laughing? Like, I'm sorry. Huge, huge, I know um, how the story goes, so it's okay wheel. for me to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> huge wheels. And then we kind of ran over his shoulder because my ex didn't see him. Because by the time that he already fell, he was like, I don't know, at the side of the 
road already and the car is a little bit elevated so you wouldn't be able to see him but he was on my side so i was like oh my god we ran we're gonna run over someone and then we literally like felt the car it's kind of like when you go over a hump Mm. it felt like that so i would really say it's impossible for that dude who ran over uaua to not know that he ran over something because he would definitely feel it yeah and he only ran over her on one part of it like the same as yeah. what happened to you and your ex uh, on one part on the right side of the car if yeah. you're in the car it's in the right side it would tilt cuz yeah, it's just it one side and i feel like that's why he paused the first time he ran over before his second wheel ran over her mhm Oh my god, if he didn't see her, he probably thought it was like a cat or like just you know Trash how people or something. don't care about roadkill as much. Yeah. That oh, never happened. In our family, we stop for whatever we f- if we feel our car go over something, we stop and like what was that? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a big yeah. deal. It's like fuck. But damn. Like, but yeah, that's what he did. So, and then the 18 people walked past by her. There were some who were riding bikes. One passed. He was in a motorcycle. He literally stopped, like, looked at the kid and then moved on. Wow. Then I the feel others like, were, like I would be, like, traumatized. Her. Right. Why? How are you not traumatized by looking at that? Call for help. If you don't want, you know, like if yeah. you're afraid of of paying for the medical bills, call someone else. Like, hey, dude, please, or call the cops and like, sorry, I can't stop, but there's this kid who was like this and that. Call the cops. It's or so call for help. easy to call for help. Yeah. Yeah. And so there were even like people who were walking literally passed by her looked at her and passed by her there were some that weren't looking that probably thought that it was just you know a pile of things Mm -hmm. but walked past by her but there were multiple people that stopped to look paused to look at her and then went went away and then the second time there was another large another truck that ran over ua ua's legs with its front and back tires because why yeah and the crazy thing before the truck came this was a bigger truck so it was higher yeah so i could understand that he couldn't see he didn't see but still you stop when you run over something but prior to that you could see the the kid's arm ua ua's arm like waving like it was trying to get up or like it yeah. was moving like it was oh trying to like god. tell people that hey i'm alive i'm alive yeah and then the the second truck passed by it the second truck didn't even stop like it like passed by it just went. i feel like it thought that it was just a pile of things mm-hmm. because she wasn't moving when when and she wasn't facing the car the the truck at that time so and the wheels were bigger so yeah and then eventually uh the female rubbish scavenger passed by and then saw her heard her crying carried her and she was what do you call this she was a bit confused at first to what to do mm-hmm. so she like disappeared for a bit i think she was looking for the parents of the kid and then eventually like she called somebody and then another person the person who she called that like, carried the the kid and then with with the female rubbish scavenger uh-huh. both carried the kid to the hospital but i from what i know it was just the female rubbish scavenger that brought her to the hospital and to think this r- rubbish scavengers don't have money but yeah she still like out of the goodness of her heart was like this is a kid like we need to bring her somewhere i'm actually why didn't the other people do that i know i'm actually wondering how badly injured she was like if you would be run over by a huge car and you're fucking two 
this is a tiny human being. Wouldn't you be like squished? And they were driving slow, so it's like, yes, I will. Yeah. There was even like part of the video where she was like holding her head. <sighs> and then oh my God. Like, she was I feel like she was trying to hold her like lower legs mm-hmm. when she was moving her arm. So yeah. Her parents, Yue Yue's parents, Wang Chi Chang and Q Fei Fei chose not to blame anyone beside themselves for their daughter's death. So Q said Granny Chen, the female rubbish scavenger, I should stop calling her that. Granny Chen, the one who helped her, um, Yue Yue, represented the best of human nature. It is the nicest and most natural side of us. For me, I feel like the parents shouldn't blame themselves because kids be kids you know like Mm. no matter how much you watch over them sometimes you're doing stuff and you believe that they're just in their room like you don't check because you know especially if you're cooking or like doing something important you can't be in all places at the same time yeah this should be like a learning lesson though to like yes check on your kids from time to time but you can't blame the parents for this accident at all i'm more pissed off at the number of people who found the kid and did nothing did nothing yeah like Like, that should be something that we need to fix that's something you can blame people about being idiots and bad people yeah Ugh. that should be they should be sued because you not helping her caused the second truck to run over her like is that considered like murder i feel like it she's should be someone... like indirect or like i don't know yes yeah, so i don't know what it's called yeah because it's like you didn't help you know they're dying but you didn't really do anything at all yeah I wonder if they thought that the kid was just pretending, but it's impossible because she was bleed. Like according to the reports by Grandma Granny Chen, that she was bleeding when she found her, like her arms and like, yeah, her arms and like parts of her legs were like bleeding. So I don't know why Uh, they didn't help her. Like, how could you see another human being and be like, "Mm, this is none of my business? Like. And Even if you're kid. in a hurry, yeah, like, you call somebody to help. Like, I exactly. get the, what do you call that? The bystander effect? The social psychological Mm-mm. theory where, like, other people are less likely to help if there are other people because they would think that somebody else the- has called to help but if in her case when there's no one beside her exactly no one has helped her because no one no one would leave a child in the street yeah and plus if like say you called for help i wouldn't be just like hey i need someone uh, i need paramedics here and then just leave even before the paramedics have come like that that doesn't make sense yeah even if you're late you can tell your boss, sorry, I'm late because I try to help somebody. Yeah. But yeah, uh, just, I feel like it's different because in, in Japan, what happened was they were sick but still went to work. Yeah. As with this one, it's like a person who's injured, but you pass no, by but like, them. Technically speaking, I mean, if we compare it to the sarin gas attack, it would still be a reason to be late. I mean, hi, someone tried to poison me. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> but at least they were like, I'm late because unlike this one, I'm not going to be late for this. Like, Yeah. It's Fuck. insane. So eventually both drivers of the boat... <laughs> drivers boat! of the <laughs> be- <laughs> What is happening to me? The two drivers... Of the two vehicles were detained by the police days after the incident on suspicion of causing a traffic accident, which is like, why is it still called a traffic accident? It should be 
And I get with the mm-hmm. second driver, with the truck driver, because he... Yeah. I feel like he didn't see, but the first one, dude, you slowed down and you, like, You ran up. over it twice! You, yeah. Like, and you didn't stop. Like, that's insane. The second driver should should have he should have still stopped but i feel like his offense isn't as big as like the first one who probably knew that he ran over a kid he didn't bother to stop and check like what the hell was that yeah. it would have felt like a huge bu- like i said because yeah, he was a van he wasn't a truck you definitely feel it you would check so yeah on may 26 2017 who june who was the driver of the first minivan or the van that ran over Wei Yue um, was put in trial in Foshan and was charged with Yue Yue's death. He pleaded guilty to traffic crimes but not homicide which like dude you're really? Are you sure? It's like oh, that I you ran didn't over back her, up? But I didn't kill her. Yeah like well, are you sure you didn't back up to kill her? Like <sighs> And so on September 6, 2017, who was convicted of involuntary homicide and sentenced to three and a half years in prison, the sentence was lightened because he turned himself in and had paid part of UA UA's medical expense, which is like, no, Kay. he should be in jail. According to China Daily, at least 10 party and government departments and organizations in Guangdong, including the province's Commission on Politics and Law, uh, the Women's Federation, the Academy of Social Science- Sciences, and the Communist Youth League, have started discussions on punishing those who refuse to help people who clearly need it. Officials of Guangdong province, this, is, this shouldn't just be in Guangdong province, though. This should be the whole world. <laughs> yeah. This should even be, like, just basic human decency. Yeah. In the Philippines, though, if you run over somebody, the reason why other people don't stop is because people will beat you up if you stop. That's a known thing, right? Like, if you get down to... If you know that you ran over somebody, like, a full-grown adult, and you get down from your car, people will beat you up. That's a thing here in the <laughs> That's where other people will like hit and run. Hit and run, but like surrender themselves to the police because they're afraid of like getting beat up. Like that's the usual thing here. Yeah, we're a different kind of ghetto. So <laughs> that does not apply. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're super helpful in the sense that we want revenge right away. <laughs> <laughs> Beat up whoever. <laughs> yeah, we're a different kind of helpful. We also yeah, need we're a help. Different kind of violent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, the, the officials of Guangdong Province, along with many lawyers and social workers, also held three days of meetings in the provincial capital of Guangzhou to discuss the case. It was reported that various lawmakers of the province were drafting a Good Samaritan law, which would penalize people who fail to help in a situation of this type of indemnify and indemnify them (laughs) for lawsuits if their efforts are in vain. Legal experts and the public debated the idea ahead of discussion and legislative push. On August 1, 2013, the nation's first Good Samaritan law took effect in Shenzhen. So there was at least like a positive effect outcome yeah yeah to the this very very unfortunate thing but there were still wait sorry (laughs) i I knew she was like trying to look at her notes because it's like where is Uh... this if y'all are not on patreon she is searching her (laughs) notes real hard right now i accidentally (laughs) scrolled down so i'm like where was i (laughs) <laughs> so before we get to the later incident so there was a british journalist who interviewed other shopkeepers in foshan a hardware market who were just meters away of the incident he found that the area where the incident occurred was inhabited mainly by 
internal migrant families, the Wangs, the Yue Yue's family mig- had migrated from Shandong seven years earlier. Mm-hmm. So what the journalist said that there's a little sense of community there and they don't talk to each other. So that's like another th- not but that's really an not excuse. an excuse. Yeah, yeah, that's not an excuse to to not help them. But that's an excuse for them because they don't have a community. But also, that's not an excuse for them to not help. Like, it, I didn't realize that you had to be like, oh, I know this in person, a community so I'm to gonna, help somebody. Yeah. It's so anyway, but yeah. So there were later incidents that still happened. After this whole thing, in Hangzhou province, a Chinese woman attempted to commit suicide by drowning in a lake, while other locals just gathered at the edge of the lake to watch her. And there... <laughs> what? <laughs> to yeah. watch her? Like, oh my god, she's dying. Let's see how long it takes for her to drown. S- see, like, I don't get what? it. Even... It- like call for help if you don't know how to swim that's it <laughs> and there there was a uruguayan mm-hmm. or uruguayan i don't know i i say uruguayan i think it's U- uruguayan right i think that's so whatever uh, please let us know i'm sorry <laughs> so, uh, a uruguayan visitor who was visiting china obviously named maria fernanda gomez Aregui swam into the water after she noticed that no one was att- attempting to rescue her and saved the woman from drowning. Like, guys, even if she attempted suicide, if you see someone do that, try to stop them, please. You're not the judge and jury for someone to, yeah, like, for <laughs> you to be like, oh, it's okay for them to die because they wanted it. No. It baffled, like, I would probably get it if, not to say that this is right, but I would probably get it if they're like, I'll I'll just leave her alone, but I will leave. But for you to just like watch until, like, there is such a thing called entertainment. Go to the cinemas if you need to watch something. Yeah. Or listen to our podcast if you've got nothing else to do. But like, yeah. don't just watch someone try to kill themselves and be like, yep, I'll I'll just sit here and watch. Yeah, call for help if you're late for something again. Yeah, <laughs> call for help. Uh, I cannot wrap my head around this because it, it just like the thought, the whole entire statement is just wrong to me. And for someone to actually do that in person and be like, yeah, I'm cool with this, it like, no, I and to it be just entertained by it. Yeah, to stop and watch and not do shit is How insane is to me. Anyway, so Maria Fernanda was awarded by the Chinese government officials and she was rewarded 3,000 yuan for her heroic display of quote-unquote traditional Chinese virtues. This article is so shady. They really quote put quotes on that shit. <laughs> The rescue achieved a high profile after the media presented photographs by Wang Rongui to contrast the lack of actions of bystanders in the de- so they there was like a photo exhibit of these things. I'm not going to explain further cuz I don't know how to explain <laughs> <laughs> of like the difference between what people should do and not do. Another later incident in China uh, that has been compared to uh, the death of Yue Yue. In December 2012, a five-year-old boy named Yan Zhe received crush injuries from a minibus in Zhejiang province. Despite the pleas of the child's mother, other drivers and passers-by refused to help. He was eventually taken to a hospital but died on the way. And this one is more fucked up because the mom was asking for help. And people yeah. were just like, uh-uh. It's like, no, thank Helping you. is not my thing. <laughs> what is this? I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to hell straight right away. <laughs> like, it, this isn't that's like what you're flyers. Doing. 
they make it seem like you're just sending out flyers and you're like, no, thank you. Yeah, like, I'm asking what? you for help. I'm not asking you for money. Like, I'm just asking you to help me carry my child. I'm, I'm, this is very concerning. And I'm wondering if there is like a certain trauma about them helping others or are they just like fucking heartless? I don't know. There was also, remember, I forgot what episode we were discussing, but there was an incident of this girl who was trigger warning i know we've already mentioned attempted suicide but this one actually happened so she was on on a building attempting to jump and so the crowd started to gather and there was like a firefighter who was trying to like save her. her yeah yeah talking her to like calm down and she was thinking about it according to the firefighter that she was like i think i'm gonna go down like i don't want to die but the mm. people in the crowd kept yelling for her to jump. So eventually she like realized if I don't jump, I'm going to get beaten up or like my reputation is going to like peer pressured go to it. shit. Yeah. And these were strangers walking by the side of the road, saw her attempt to do something and they started yelling at her to do it. And when she did eventually jump, they fucking cheered a crowd of like I think it was more than 20 people it was so fucked up I watched the video because a, a person who was recording it who was like giving side comments about how mm -hmm. he was disappointed in the other people who were like cheering her on to jump yeah and the firefighter who was interviewed after he said that he felt so bad because she was thinking of like not jumping anymore like she yeah she was like, hesitating he talked her out of it yeah he talked her out of it but because people were like when she turned around to like try to go inside yeah and she heard that the people were like screaming at her to jump instead like they were even screaming at her that she was useless anyway so that's when she turned around and like jumped this and is what's worse why we don't when, get good things. Yeah. It's so fucked up. And when the news of that shit happened in Weibo, is that it? Weibo? Weibo? Weibo. Which is like, yeah, Chinese Facebook, it's Twitter. It's like a social. Yeah, social media for them. Th there were comments and like, well, like she wanted it anyway and shit like that. Like, dude, you should not condone this stupid shit. I remember what episode we talked about this. It was on the Hello Kitty episode. Right. The Hello right. Kitty murder. Uh, yeah. I like discussed it a bit. But yeah, the there were comments that Why were so like fucking this savage. This so disgusting. Yeah. I hope you see it in someone else's eyes how gross you're being. Like, it is not cool. It is not... You're not being funny. I don't know why you're doing this shit. I'm confused. Like, Who is your life... You? Is your life that boring that you want drama from someone else? Yeah. And someone who, who's not in a good mental state because she was diagnosed to be mm -hmm. de depressed. She was clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. For you to like attack someone who's going through shit is so fucking low and disgusting of you. Like it is not. You're not winning in this. Did you get the car? Did you get the girl? Did you get the house by doing that shit? No. <laughs> so I don't even point? know how that made their lives better. Yeah, to be it's honest. not going to make your life better. Oh my god, wow. I I wasn't expecting this episode to be like really dark and heavy. <laughs> but like, wow, humanity. Where yeah, is it? It's Does so it even exist up. anymore? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the death of Yue Yue and Peng Yu incident, which, which you covered lightly. So yeah, what do you guys think? Are you as pissed as I am? As we are. <laughs> I hope you guys still have the energy to continue your day after you've listened to this episode because I'm I so am, sorry. <laughs> I'm honestly quite thankful we're doing this late in the afternoon because like 
I get to rest. I don't have the rest of the day to be like, oh my God, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I wanted to cover it so that people who are listening to this, because there are some Filipinos that are, mm, want to punch them <laughs> because <laughs> they are starting to act like, this way yeah. yeah it is not cool it is not funny it's not going to make you rich it's not going it's not going to make you any better life. yeah yeah that's the word i was looking for <laughs> better you are it's looking not for the going word to better. make you better <laughs> <laughs> what i'm curious about is if i mean like if you're a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. I don't know who who um, studies these things. Um, I'm interested to know what the creepers think. Why there are people like that out there? What triggers them to be like this? Because I don't think that you would randomly be just like, yeah, sure, I'm I'm okay with someone dying. I'm okay with someone killing themselves. Or when you pass by someone who's clearly in need of help, and you're just like, you know, I don't feel like it today. I- I'll pretend like I didn't see that and go. Yeah. You know? What did you go through in life to be that bullshit kind of person? Like, exactly. There are people that have gone through worse that are better than you. What, what fucking happened to you? Where did the disconnect happen? Like, sure. to those that know, please let us know. Because I do not want to think that this is humanity like this is this isn't normal i wouldn't yeah. say it's normal i'm also like i'm also interested to know what kind of therapy they have to go through to change the way they think and what we can do also like as a person to like help people like that to like yeah. change their mind like what can we do exactly <laughs> I just want to like yell at these people like, look at <laughs> how disgusting you are. Yeah. And I mean like sometimes people say it's because of how we're so used to seeing violence and all of that, but I would like to disagree. Yeah. Cuz like say for example my father, he grew up in the southern part of the Philippines where there is like a lot of lot war of going on. Yeah. Mm. So um, I remember him telling us when he was a kid that they would sometimes have to stop their classes and they'd be forced to go home because they would hear bombs and gunshots from their school because there's a war going on. And for you to grow up in that kind of environment, you would think that like, they would be so insensitive and like desensitized by these things. But my dad is one of the most sensitive people and empathetic people that I know. So I don't think it's just that. Yeah. You know, like, what yeah, this? I agree. Even if like people who are very into true crime are very empathetic like there's an yeah. actual community out there that's like helping each other so i don't think it's like what we see in the media like what did these people go through that are so different from us that you know for them to be like that way like yeah. it's so i don't know is it a societal thing what's going on in what was the name of the place again? In China, somewhere in China, I can't remember. In because I can't pronounce. Foshong. <laughs> again, Jesus. In Foshan, what's going on there? Like, <laughs> is it like a cultural thing? Like, I want to know. I want somebody to like study this thing because I cannot understand it. My brain cannot like wrap around this thing. Yeah. It's scary to think if, I mean, like, if you say it's a cultural thing, that is fucking scary. Cause yeah, because that would that mean would a mean, lot of people. Yeah, and that would mean that for genera- generations to come, that would be the same thing. Because you'd be teaching, th- like, it becomes tradition. It becomes some, yeah. like, yeah, culture. Which is so fucking scary. I mean, if you creepers have any idea... What goes on in these kinds of things, how we can stop it, and why it actually happens. Hit us up on 
our uh, socials. That's at Creepy Convos on Twitter, Facebook, and Creepy Conversations on Instagram. You can even email us through our website. That's creepyconversations.com. And also follow, subscribe. (laughs) Please leave us a review on iTunes and like follow us on Spotify because it would really, really help us. (laughs) <laughs> oh and if you want to watch videos and exclusive content we have a lot of fun stuff on patreon so don't forget to subscribe to us on patreon.com slash creepy convos and thanks for creeping you fucking creeper and remember the government is always watching you literally what happened to this 18 people passed by cctv caught it So always be good, people. It doesn't hurt. (laughs) Exactly. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.